Good day everyone! Welcome to the Unit 2 which is Life Science. For today, we are going to discuss the introduction to life science wherein you will encounter the different theories behind the origin of life. Maybe as of now, you are still thinking of where do I came from or even where did life originate? Some people are trying to seek for answers about these questions in different ways. Some thinkers look up in the skies to search for possible explanation, while others try to look around their surroundings to observe and find clues. So now, we are going to discuss about the theories of the origin of life. The first theory is the special creation which is known as the earliest hypothesis about the origin of life. There is no evidence found in order to support this theory but it explains that life came from the supernatural power of the God. This theory is based on biblical beliefs just like in the Genesis 1, 1 which says that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and created different kinds of plants and animals according to their kinds in six natural days. Until now, it is one of the greater topics in debate or argument since we are still thinking about the truth, why and how does life exist. Next theory is all about the existence of life from a sudden non-living things. Some people have developed their concepts because of their observations. One philosopher is a great believer of this theory who is Aristotle since he observed that a decayed meat has maggots and the stored grains are eventually having rats which are spontaneously existing. But as time passed by, some people did not support this and many people or scientists made their own arguments and experiments to disprove this theory of spontaneous generation. First, Francisco Reddy, who made an experiment about a meat inside a jar. He uses three different experiments where the first bottle is open and has a fresh meat inside it and afterwards he observed that the jar is also filled with maggots. Second, bottle with a gauze covering and the meat inside it. He observed that the maggots also arises inside the jar. The last experiment is a fully covered jar with parchment by which he observed that there were no maggots inside the jar. So, as a conclusion, this experiment explains that maggots were caused by the flies which infested the uncovered and ghost jar. The reason why, he say that maggots do not spontaneously arise from a piece of meat. Next is John Needham, so this is John and additional information, whose experiments was to heat a meat broth and observe that the bacteria is originated from the meat. Later on, Lazaro Ispolensani improved John Needham's experiment wherein he boiled a meat broth in a concealed flask and the observation was, there is no microorganisms arises from the broth. But... When there is an open flask being heated the broth, the microorganisms grow which leads him to conclude that air carried germs to the broth if it is an open bottle, thereby disproving the theory of spontaneous generation. Tudor's one, a scientist who concludes out of his experiments that bacteria or microorganisms did not rise from the flask, even the air passes through because there is a hot tube connecting the flask that tries to hinder the air to go through. Lastly, Louis Pasteur, who uses a swan neck experiment. First, he boils the broth in a long swan neck flask, then let it sit and observe that there is no present bacteria. But on the second, he boils the broth but in a broken neck. Let's sit and observe that there is a microbial growth. So he concluded that germs or bacteria could come from other germs that is being carried away by the air. This theory of spontaneous generation teaches us that life is necessary to produce another life, thus life is impossible to exist without another living organism. The third is the theory of panspermia, which came from a Greek word, meaning seeds everywhere. According to this theory, life exists in the universe and the life on earth may have been transported 
from somewhere else in the universe. It could be from the collision of asteroid, which send broken materials, which are said to be composed of organic compounds that serve as the building blocks of life. But it does not really answer our quest on the origin of life. Last, a theory of chemical evolution that explains living ocean as a primordial soup, which is a rich collection of complex molecules produced by natural chemical reactions. The scientists who made a simulation about the ancient Earth conditions were Miller and Ray. So, under experiment as a simulation of water cycle, demonstrated that biomolecules can form under Earth-like conditions. The experiment was once a mere speculation that life may have emerged from chemistry. Moreover, this theory explains that life was a result of slow and gradual chemical processes. Next topic about the introduction to life science is the unifying themes that deepen our scientific understanding of life, which shows the connections among living things and how they interact with one another and to their environment. First, order, which talks about the taxonomical rank in organisms. It also talks about the study of life which can be subdivided into different levels of biological organization. So, in order to easily memorize this biological organization, make sure to use the mnemonics of OCTO-OOP, O for organelles, C for cells, T for tissues, O for organs, O for organ systems, O for organisms, P for population. It starts with a single organelle that is composed atoms and that atoms composed of molecules. The combination of those organelles will form cells, which is used to form tissue, and it will be collaborated to create organs and later on work together to form organ system, which will form organism. The organism will comprise the population. Next, regulation. It refers to individuals' way of response to the environment in which they are able to maintain their internal environment or balance, which is called as homeostasis. Third is the energy processing, which is one of the most important themes of life to maintain survival. Different animals have their own unique way of obtaining their source of energy. So, we have here the autotrophic by which they capture energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy. While organisms use these autotrophic organisms, especially for those herbivorous animals, as their source of energy. And some consumers or animals obtain their food from the primary consumer. So, once they take in food, it must undergo metabolism in order for them to function and survive. Growth and Development as part of the unifying themes, it refers to the phenotype or genotype that organisms show evidence of the same characteristics as their parents. Reproduction has been one of the most important concepts for the sake of survival. In here, parents pass through their traits to another generation. This is their way to reproduce to prevent them from extinction of their population. Response to the environment it refers to how an organism interacts with their environment for their survival, also for their everyday life. Living things must learn to adapt to their changing environment as a means to stay alive. Adaptation is a life-sustaining process by which living organisms adjust to their environment. And when it happens, they gradually evolve over time. And this is called evolution. This process is to become better and fitter to the environment. So that is the end of my discussion about the introduction to life science. So if you have any clarifications or questions, just message me directly through my messenger account. That would be all for today and goodbye everyone. Thank you for listening.